So I am here at Dallas Airport and I am very emotional right now because I just went through security and I chose a line that purposely wasn't going through the body scanner which I've read so many terrible things and I do a lot of traveling so I said to myself I will always opt out of that thing or try my best to go in a line, a security line that doesn't require you to go through the machine because of the high radiation levels and the guy said well you don't have to go through the scanner but if you opt out you're gonna get a full body pat down and I said fine the pat down at Dallas Airport was completely different than the one I got at LAX and I'm sure this woman was just doing her job but she I mean she actually felt touched my vagina and so I think that's why I'm crying that's why I'm so emotional because I'm already so upset that they're making me go making me do this making me choose to either get molested because that's what I feel like and or or go through this machine that's completely unhealthy and dangerous and I don't want to go through it and here I am crying never in my wildest dreams that I think that this was gonna make me cry but I'm crying because I'm just really really upset that as an American I have to go through this and I do feel violated I didn't think that I would when I had to opt out of the machine but I completely feel violated this woman she touched my vagina four times because she went up my leg, up both legs, from behind, and then turned around and did it in the front. So that was my experience this morning at Dallas Airport. First and foremost on my list though is actually eliminating the imaging machines. Getting these the fuck out of the airport. The people like you have you you and you you can you can be a part of this. We can make this happen. Instead of just sitting around bitching and holding our dicks. Yes. These are horrible. Like, just from you guys, I want everyone to know this, because some of you, this might be news. From a purely tech perspective, even the, the, the whole idea of like, let's have dumb people supporting the tech, this isn't even tech worth supporting. It can't detect anything. The UK, look at that last quote. The UK did a fucking study on this and did not go for it. The UK, if there's a technology that's voyeuristic and invasive for security purposes and the UK doesn't want a piece of that, Jesus, it is not working. So security is two different things, right? It's a feeling and it's a reality. A and they're different. Right? You can feel secure even if you're not. And you can be secure even if you don't feel it. And the question to ask when you look at a security anything is not whether this makes us safer, but whether it's worth the trade-off. I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know, drug smugglers, sometimes I've heard they put drugs up their rectum. So what happens when, you know, a bomber or somebody, a terrorist, puts something up their rectum? Are, they, are we going to get rectal exams at the airport? Is that what's next? It just, this whole thing is very troublesome to me and it pisses me off. I'm clearly upset about it. So you'd think that us, as a successful species on the planet, right, you, me, everybody, would be really good at making these trade-offs. Yet it seems again and again that we're hopelessly bad at it. There's a study that just came out, I just had to add this slide, the actual Journal of Transportation Security evaluated these machines. They don't detect shit at all. They do detect your junk, yes. So why do we have them? The same reason we have most stuff the government gets behind. Money and stupidity. Money and stupidity. Who can name the first person on this side here? Chertoff, who can name the person over here? Yeah. Exactly. Napolitano. Not to be confused with Judge Napolitano. He was an excellent guy, writes a lot of good comments. But yes, money and stupidity. If the market drives security, and if people make trade-offs based on the feeling of security, then the smart thing for companies to do, for the economic incentives, are to make people feel secure. Right? And there are two ways to do this. One, you can make people actually secure and hope they notice. Or two, you can make people just feel secure and hope they don't notice. <laughs> Absolutely do not put up with this shit. Tell people about this. Tell, this is what the government is trying to spin. These are friendly images. Most citizens, most passengers like the pat, like the machine instead of the pat down. Well, yeah, instead of the fucking pat down, of course people like the machine. That's 
They reminded me, who remembers that old commercial with the socks? Where they're like, look, this is the dirty sock. This is the sock washed in the competitor's brand. But this is the sock washed in tie. Yeah, like compared to shit, compared to ball grabbing, sure, like this looks good. Behavioral shit. Ben Gurion Airport, that is the super white sock. That's what I want on my toes and my shawl. Oh, my shorts. If we're gonna go with the, the, the sock and the shawl. <laughs> Something that, you know, this is where people think I'm getting a little freaky and all, because I, I get all passionate about stuff. Do not discount that there are people in the government very happy with citizens being quite fine with arbitrarily being put into submissive positions in front of people in authority. I do not cotton to that. I do not dig on that. That is a big part of this for me too. The idea that little kids can be walking through the airport with their parents. Oh, what's daddy doing? Oh, well, this man with the badge said he's just supposed to stand like this for a while. Fuck you. You know, one of the very sweet older woman who was uh, an airport volunteer came over to me and she was trying to comfort me because she saw me crying. She said, well, honey, you know what? She's like, I'd rather do a pat down or go through the scanner than, you know, be blown up. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm supposed to find comfort in that, but I didn't. This is kind of like the Sesame Street game of which thing doesn't belong. And you're right to say it's the swimming pool that doesn't belong because the swimming pool is the only thing on this slide that's actually very dangerous. The way that more of you are likely to die than the combination of all three of the others you see on this slide. Uh, we tend to exaggerate spectacular and rare risks and downplay common risks. When was the last time you picked up a newspaper and the headline was, boy dies of asthma? It's not interesting because it's so common. I'll, I'll give you the short answer. The answer is we respond to the feeling of security and not the reality. Drownings and asthma deaths don't get much coverage. They don't come quickly to mind and as a result, we vastly underestimate them. So you can imagine how that works. If you hear a lot about tiger attacks, there must be a lot of tigers around. You don't hear about lion attacks, there aren't a lot of lions around. This works until you invent newspapers. Because what newspapers do is they repeat again and again rare risks. Now I tell people if it's in the news, don't worry about it. Because by definition, news is something that almost never happens. There's a large role here played by the media who want who want these things to be as spectacular as they possibly can. Would you say that this mechanism is in part how terrorism actually works to, to frighten us? And is there some way that we could counteract that? <laughs> I actually was uh, consulting recently with the Department of Homeland Security, which generally believes that uh, American security dollars should go to making borders safer. I tried to point out to them that Terrorism was a name based on people's psychological reaction to a set of events, and that if they were concerned about terrorism, they might ask what causes terror and how can we stop people from being terrified? You know, we just freak out and panic for every possible situation that comes along. Why? Because that's, we are responsive, we are reactive, we're not proactive in any way. If a risk is thrust upon you, terrorism is a good example. You'll overplay it because you don't feel like it's in your control. These are small-scale accidents, and we should be wondering whether they should get the kind of play, the kind of coverage that they do. Surely that causes people to overestimate the likelihood that they'll be hurt uh, in these various ways and gives power to the very people who want to frighten us. Stakeholders with specific trade-offs will try to influence the decision, and I call that their agenda. And you see agenda. This is marketing. This is politics. Uh, trying to convince you to have one model versus another. How do we fight back? How do we fight back against all these policies? We can do it. Two methods of attack. Monkey wrenching and political pressure. Monkey wrenching the system, I'm sad to say, involves making bad lines worse. That is the thing. Make this process as bad as it can be so that more people are pissed, so that there's pressure coming from the top down, from the bottom up, everywhere. You want to stand there and just make fun, like, so people can see you and be like, boy, this is the worst hand job I've ever gotten. Like, just, you know, whatever you want to say. Like, I was like, you know what, man? It's time to bust out the kilts. <laughs> kilts, no underwear, stroll on the floor. Our friends in not DC 949 have had their own plan, maybe chemically assisted, but they're just gonna, like, power their way into, like, a huge erection. If you have a friend, 
Ask for an observer. Why? Because it just pulls more people through. Now your friend has to go to this other area. Now he or she has to be cleared. Now there's more people involved. Now you have someone to operate a camera. That is absolutely your right, and it's a good thing in my opinion. Why a camera for documenting? The more videos like this and photos that wind up on YouTube, the more political pressure we have. This is Calpurnia Adams. She is a transgender activist, she's a speaker, she's well known, and she's really, really hot, man. For a trans woman, like, yes, I think she's smoking. Do you know? Transgender people have different sets of rights, special rights in these screenings. You have the right to request a physical pat down, not from a person of your sex, but a person of your gender. Because you guys know that's two different things. How you are presenting that day is how you are allowed to be screened. And again, not only is it good to flex your rights if you're a person like this who really needs to be understood by people in authority, but it just ties the shit up more. It gets people hassled. It gets, oh, we gotta call supervisors. Don't get angry, just get, you know, indignant. Just demanding of what is, you know, your right in the situation. Be aware that real cops do not like TSA fake cops. TSA gets a little badge and a blue shirt. They are not sworn officers. They do not have police authority. Police hate it when they behave as though they have authority. If you have been actually wronged, if you have been touched or grabbed before you gave your consent or you say, no, I want to leave, if they actually get in your face, demand a police officer. Get a supervisor, tell him or her to demand a police officer. They will all but fillet you trying to get you out of that blue screening area before a cop gets there. How do you bring about the political pressure? Actually writing letters, being part of the lawsuits that are out there, tweeting, posting videos, like writing letters and such to your, to your representatives. Tell them, be like, hey, shitbird, you just got in office because of these things that I care about, you're gonna be on the fucking street if you don't get this shit fixed up. They do listen, especially if it keeps happening. Surely rationally, our distress about things that happen, about threats, should be roughly proportional to the size of those threats. If our feelings match reality, we make better security trade-offs. We have to be political occasionally, a little bit, because it takes political pressure to make change. Kennedy once vowed that he would smash the CIA into a thousand pieces. Yeah, we saw how well that worked out for him, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, do you expect this kind of leadership from Obama? Like, we will smash the TSA into a thousand pieces. I don't think that's going to happen. No. Certainly not in this political climate. It's only going to happen if people get really angry. Like, we're angry. But actually take this anger plus your knowledge of how security is supposed to really fucking work and make a change. For the benefit of those watching or the relatives that you send this link to, and be like, hey, this guy's funny, but he says fuck a lot. Cunt was in there once. <laughs>